Yo, what's up, everybody? Just a quick disclaimer about the audio in this one. We had some issues, so we had to go with the Skype audio for Dan and Brayden. But it's good Skype audio, not like Douglas's Skype audio from a few case files ago. So don't worry, it's listenable. It's just going to sound a little different than normal. But that's it. Other than that, just a regular old case file. See you on the other side. In 1976, NASA was more than happy to release photos sent back by their pioneering Viking 1 space probe. Among those photos, there was a mysterious image that would set the UFO community's collective imagination to focus on our rocky red neighbor. Of the 40 missions sent to Mars, only 18 have been deemed successful. Although, that success rate seems impressive when weighed against the many challenges of landing and surviving on the Martian planet's surface. Dust storms that can last for months and cover huge areas of the planet, a barely there atmosphere, and the planet lacks the protection granted by an intrinsic global magnetic field. For those reasons alone, scientists have been hesitant to consider Mars a suitable place for a human space settlement. But. There are claims that shadowy space programs have been sending people there for years. Claims that the planet was previously unpopulated and that perhaps those Martian inhabitants have even been living among us to save us from the same events that doomed their once thriving planet. This case file joined the theorists as they <laughs> and explore the Mars mysteries. Welcome to Alien Theorist Theorizing Case File 125 Mars Mysteries. Oh, I'm Brett. Yeah. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. Big Dan. <laughs> and I'm Andrew. <laughs> now with 20% more Dan. Yeah. Just Dan's eye. All seeing eye of Dan. I don't what know. happened there? I don't know. Well, it, that's just uh, Skype likes to ch- sometimes change the size of people's videos for no reason. On the fly. If you listen to this pod, we also live stream every Monday at 7 30. Except for, right. <laughs> Except for <laughs> Unless today. Unless we do it on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I uh, thought today was Monday. <laughs> so you got to uh, follow us on social media to find out when we're live streaming. It, most of the time it's Mondays. Uh, but me and Andrew. We sold out. Connected. We sold out for we some fucking Canucks tickets. <laughs> yeah. That's some Canucks tickets. So we're going to the game tomorrow. So we couldn't record. So we're doing it early. That's right. You heard it here first. We're taking bribes for case files. So if you have any <laughs> ideas, send those ticks. Yeah. Oh, great. All right. Mars. Everyone's yeah. everyone's favorite planet. Is it? Um, <laughs> I mean, except the one that we're on. Except, well, people treat this one like they don't give a fuck. So yeah, Mars it is. Well, if we keep going, this planet's going to look like Mars. True. Could Mars happen. or Venus. Some people think Venus looked like Earth. There's more Earth like than Mars was, ever was. And then it got a was, ru- runaway greenhouse effect, and now you got a hellhole. Yeah. There's only one actual, I think there's only one actual photo from uh, from the surface of Venus. But, but we're not here to talk about Venus. Yeah. <laughs> Mars. <laughs> Mars. Mars mysteries. Um, a lot going on on the red planet. We're obviously headed there um, with SpaceX and stuff. We're going to set up colonies. But what if they're already there? Or what if they're already here? Ooh. Came from yeah. there to here? <laughs> a, lot, a lot of cool theories about Mars. Like, There's a lot of... Well, Mars has always been... Yeah, because it's one of, you know, it's our one of our closest neighbors. It's about the same size as Earth, somewhat. Uh, I think it's a little bit lesser intensity. Gravity is a little less. Um, 
but it's always been up there following us around. They think, it, they think it's got a solid core and it's not quite, it's more like a potato shape <laughs> and it doesn't have a really good atmosphere or a magnetic field, which makes it difficult. There's a lot of Mars. Hey, Mars got, Mars got problems. Mars got his own problems. Mars got problems. Yeah, so do we. <clears throat> Scott Andrew, I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna give an intro for this one. You were talking about how much you uh, you studied up for Mars. Mars, yeah. Well, you guys know I'm the go-to space guy. <laughs> yeah. So here, this is what I know about Mars. When you go to Mars, or no, boys go to Mars because they get more chocolate bars. Girls go to Jupiter because they get more stupider. It's about my knowledge of space right there. Learned that shit in grade two. That boy, Ricky. You like that? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I mean, That's excellent. If, if there was a Pacino movie about Mars, then maybe I could help you out with it, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Scarface in space? Scarface in space? Okay, do you want to go to Mars, man? I'll take you to Mars. Scarface is loud. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ooh, uh, um, so where are we starting with Mars Mysteries? I think we probably want to start with, there's a story that came out a while ago about, like I said, maybe the Martians are already here on Earth. And there was one report of a boy named Boriska Kipriyanovich. Little Boris. Uh, a Russian from boy Russia, from Mars. Right, from Volgograd, Russia. And it came out a while ago that this child, he's now 21. Like when, uh, when they've, when the story came out, I think he was, he was, how old is he? he was 11 when the story came out. The story came out in, in 2006. Right. Um, is his mother said from an early age, like Boris seemed, you know, different. Um, she said that she knew that something was special about him when he was able to hold his head up, uh, at very young, after what he was like minutes old or something no, like that. 15 days. She said after 15 days, he was holding his head up. No problem. Mm. I don't, I'm not an expert on early child development. Is that a big thing? <laughs> it's, it's pretty impressive to be able to hold your head, like completely hold your head up. And from what I understand, she's saying like he could hold his head up while he was on a stomach, which for a 15 day old is like remarkable. Mm. A little superhuman. You don't develop yes. those neck muscles for, you know what I mean? At least a couple months. He's my special boy. <laughs> so being able to hold your head up apparently is the hallmark of a child who is a reincarnated Martian. Uh, at least that's the story that Boriska came up with. Well, there, was, um, there was a little bit more to it though, right, Dan? Like uh, they were, she was saying like as of six months, little Boris was able to like fucking speak. He was able to read the headlines on newspapers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? At one years old. So one years old, he's able to read. Um, and then as soon as he's able to read, he starts, you know what I mean? Spouting off about all this bizarre knowledge of space that just did not make any sense. Right. The, the mom admitted that they had never taught him anything about space. I mean, he was you know, a young kid. He's not like see him. He had an interest in space, but it's not like they kind of, you know, super encouraged it or whether they're not astronomers or astrophysicists or his parents. His mom was and, a doctor. Um, they didn't say hmm? of, his mom was a doctor. They didn't say of what, but she was. Yeah. A learned person. Right. So it's not, it's kind of strange, but he was coming up with very detailed stories about what life was like when he apparently lived on Mars and his Mars body. His past Mars life. Right. Um, in his past Mars life, uh, he said that he was a member of a population of Martians that lived, um, like on the surface of Mars and what had happened is they actually ended up being wiped out in an interplanetary war or most of them anyways. Like a nu and, a nuclear war or something, right? That's what they claim. Mm -hmm. uh, those who survived, he said there are survivors and there were survivors, or at least there might be actually to this day, there are survivors who moved underground and that's why we haven't discovered any existence of them yet is because they're living in these underground bunkers uh, below the surface of Mars. Because I mean, we already know that the surface of Mars is almost wholly unhospitable. Like you, if you, I mean, most, most scientists have said like, if we want to be able to uh, find a sustainable living condition on Mars, you're either going to have to go underground or you're going to have to build structures out of like Mars rock. Like right. that's what you're going to oh, have to do. 
Yeah, on the surface, you are getting blasted with radiation. Oh mm-hmm. my god! Just you'd be just little cancer trolls walking around. But now, could that have been from the nuclear war, though? No, I mean you're getting well from the nuclear war. I mean, potentially it could have wiped out their atmosphere. That could have been a reason that there's no atmosphere on Mars. But because there's no atmosphere, you're getting just yeah. Like, like Brayden said, you're getting blasted with every type of radiation that's just flying through well, space. It's so not, not so much the atmosphere; it's that the lack of magnetic shield. Like, yeah. yeah. So, like, because on Earth we have like the like the sh- <clears throat> like the magnetic shield, and that deflects most like the solar wind and shit away, and that's why we get like auroras and all that. But on Mars, as far as we know, there is no auroras. Mm-mm. You're taking space raw, straight straight <laughs> to the skin. Straight space. <laughs> it is warm though. Around the equator, they say it's about eighty degrees Fahrenheit during nice. the day. What is but that in real temperature? I don't know. It's at twenty-three degrees. Oh, no. that's not bad. Normal world temperature. <laughs> oh yeah, so I he, could deal with that. He ended up going into a little bit more detail too, because he explained like the people who would live there. They are over two meters tall. Um, they stop aging at thirty-five. They only breathe carbon uh, dioxide. I read that they stop aging at age 35. Like, is that like that? They do that on purpose. Like they have scientific advancement to stop aging or is like they're like 35. And now you live forever. Like, like <laughs> that's where you stop. That's it. I don't know if it's a biological or a technological advancement. I mean, some of these things, it's like, yeah, I ask you ask questions about this. And it's really, uh, I mean, you'd have to talk to Boris. <laughs> Well, Which is, you the, can't find him now. He's disappeared. We can't get him on the show? No, he's disappeared. He's gone? Yeah. They got rid of him. He's, he's like, spilled the beans. Went back to Mars. <laughs> you want to go to Mars? Okay. <laughs> uh, going into the two meters tall, that makes sense, though, because Mars only has, what, 30% of our gravity? Yeah, something like that. Okay, so, like, well, maybe I should go to space going then. To space, they have to make their suits a little bit bigger to account for them growing in space. Their s- spine just elongating. Oh, send me to space. Around space. <laughs> send me to so space. I can imagine like someone growing, um, like growing up on Mars, you would, there wouldn't be that gravitational restriction. You know how good that would feel on your back? Just instant oh. traction, like herniated discs, just <laughs> pop right back. Oh God. Probably comes, joints are like butter. Probably comes with a host of other negative side effects though. Yeah. <laughs> One you can can't dream. poop. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you can't poop ever. You can't poop. <laughs> is right. that what they? Is that what astronauts on the space station say? It's hard to poop. I think it's. I think it's harder to poop. I would imagine. So. Probably. You got to really right? force it. Yeah. Oh, they don't have squatty potties. Let me tell you. You know what? Everyone. Spaceships? Everyone knows that. No matter. Like, if you got a really bad case of diarrhea, it doesn't matter what G's you're in. That baby's blast. <laughs> blast. <laughs> Well, you would and know then, after going half Hortons against a building in Pasadena. And then, and now you got <laughs> no expert over dude, here. And then you got no gravity. And now you, now you have like an explosive shit. You're never cleaning that up. Oh, you, one <laughs> you have to wear, they wear like astronauts Di- wear like absorbent underwear. Yeah. Like that. It's like people don't think about that, but they like, they just wear like adult diapers essentially and just shit themselves. Yeah. I've heard, <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, not shit themselves. I don't think, but just in case like you've, like you fart and a little comes out, it doesn't start floating around the fucking space station. Or if you have, Dude, if you I have to legitimately to interview, use the bathroom, I, I'm pretty sure like their toilets are mostly like a system of tubes. Oh yeah. Like sorry. Gotta, if you're like, in a space suit, if you're in a space suit, you wear fucking absorbent underwear and like adult diapers and you just shit and piss yourself. Well, you, <laughs> what else are you going to do? In space. Yeah. Okay. Now back, back to this Boriska. What I the one thing I read that I thought was quite interesting is he claims that behind the Sphinx's ear in Giza is like something. Well, you can unlock it and it will change life on Earth. Yes, uh, that is something that he said. And then it was reported that ten ten years after this claim, uh, they did a deep sensory scan of the Sphinx and it revealed that there actually was something behind the ear well you you can see there's like a little carving of a square behind his ear but like i i'm confused by that because like it's 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 not like the sphinx was built it was carved like there's no there's no space to have anything in there like you hear about Uh, you hear about like the secrets under the paw of the of the sphinx like which they they just fucking flooded that entire area right 
to reduce the water table. So I don't know, like if there was anything under there, you think they would flood it? That doesn't make sense. Well, to the, me. all the all of Giza is cov- is like honeycombed with like it's called the, the Giza underground. It's well, like, it's there, but see, those tunnels are mostly they, they they theorize that those tunnels are mostly made by like grave robbers. They weren't tunnels designed for the actual fucking Sphinx itself. Or grave robbers to get to the treasures underneath the Sphinx. Well, that's it. They, so it they might, might be, have assumed. It might be in some, all this shit could be in some private collector's, you know, mansion vault in yeah, like Nick Cage. Belgium well, or you something. Know, or yeah, Nick Cage's mansion somewhere like, that he bought at some shady <laughs> auction it, where he blows all his money. And that's why he has to do all these terrible movies. Mm-hmm. If that was the case, you know damn right Harrison Ford would have showed up, punched him in the face, and said, "This belongs in a museum." <laughs> okay, here, here's the here's, here's, a, here's the old carving. ass, just like, bro. <laughs> here's the, that's the carving on the behind the ear. Yeah, it, it. Yeah. Does it look like? What does it look like? Looks like a. So, by, it's under the Sphinx's right ear. There, it looks like a. It looks actually pretty big because it, it's you know it's quarter of the size of the ear and the sphinx is how tall but here's the thing like i you think this is the first time that that was seen though you know what i mean no, like yeah. that, like it's <laughs> you you know they've been making they've had pictures of the sphinx for i don't know how long it's, it, it kind of looks like someone went up there and tried to chisel into the sphinx or like maybe hooked up some type of like suspension equipment to it you know what i mean well it could have always been part of the thing because they always said that the human face wasn't always the original face it was a lion right or it could have been a lion, could have been a, a lion. jackal, yeah. could have been a couple yeah. things. Um, but they're not sure that the human face was ever the original, uh, the original form of the Sphinx. No, I I agree with that. Um, but yeah, uh, old Bariska apparently, you know, he said he's not all, the only child from space. He says there are others like him uh, who were sent here on a specific mission to save humanity. And his uh, overall Bariska's message to. Uh, us humans uh, seems to be one of peaceful and to be like, don't end up like us. Don't destroy yourselves. You know, um, he kind of expressed concern about the escalating tensions between the U S and Korea and uh, their uh, nuclear, you know, nuclear woes, things like that. So, well, he's not doing a good job because the, the fucking threat level just went to uh, from two minutes to midnight to threat level midnight. 20 seconds to midnight Wait, or no seconds. 90 seconds to midnight. Who's the person? Two minutes. It's, it's two minutes to midnight sec- is Iron Maiden. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> who's right? who's in charge of sec- who's in charge of setting this midnight clock here? How, how do we get to 20? What's doomsday uh, clock? You know, doomsday no clock. Manhattan does it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like who's who they get together. Like, all right. We're all, we're only 20 seconds till end of the world now. Haven't you seen Lock Watchmen? Manhattan. You got Nixon, uh, Nixon sitting there with the fucking doomsday clock and they move it. That's what I mean. Who is that? Nixon. Is that a? It's, it's still. It's as a. It's He's also a, Nixon's also dead. Nixon's head. Yeah. Head in yeah. Yes. I don't know, but he like this are, Boris. Wait a sec. Are we talking about threat level up. midnight, like the the Michael Scott film? <laughs> I think I just said that by mistake. Oh, okay. Because that, that's a fucking <laughs> and then thing. The of, Doomsday Clock. I didn't mean threat level midnight. <laughs> threat level midnight. Another excellent movie. Uh, fuck yeah. Fucking Golden Face. He's all behind this shit. I knew it. <laughs> Well, that uh, mm-hmm. that guy, it's interest. He seems like a he seemed like a pretty smart kid, right? I mean, he had a sick mullet, so I mean, <laughs> that's the if you look him up. I mean, that's it, but here's the thing, though. Like, it, it's it's kind of a cool story. It's a neat idea, but like things that I don't really understand. Like you've you've got this like extremely remarkable kid, supposedly that was born in 1996. And yet there's no evidence of this kid being able to fucking walk at six months and talk and re- you know what I mean? Like if your kid was doing that kind of shit at his age, there it would be well known. You know what I mean? Like Buddy, this, this was, this is Russia. Doesn't matter. That's a weird stuff happens in Russia. No, yeah. Know. Russian kids like fight fucking bears and shit. Listen, so. This isn't, this you isn't fucking curtain, red. Man. This isn't red sun. Okay. He wasn't, he didn't come down here. <laughs> Not but, Superman. You know what I mean? Like it just doesn't make sense. And then like, it's, it, it sounds like a really interesting science fiction story. You know what I mean? But it, it, to me, it, essentially, it sounds like a, a fucking like a really, you know what I mean, remarkably smart child with a really good imagination. Yeah. Uh, if if it, he were truly as you know advanced as he says, I'm surprised. Like he's if he's 21 now, like I don't know if he's got a doctorate or you know I I would think that he would be some kind of world renowned physicist at this point. Have a yeah, double uh, degree right. by now. But. 
Well, you I know. Have to use he's that kind of, he's got, I guess he's just kind of disappeared at this point. I haven't, have I haven't heard anything really about him. Dr. Manhattan's phone and call up to Myers to see if you can talk to him. I do. Hey, maybe this kid was <laughs> on to something. Maybe because uh, we've talked about the secret space program and they don't want space. To, the space program. Space. You got your teeth in there, Zell? You sound a little lispy, bro. All right, just I, well, I got pretty stoned just before. <laughs> If you're playing the ATT drinking game, I think you finish a drink. Isn't <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh, someone got to him. He was on to, he's on to the truth. He's on to the secret space program. Solar Warden. All that shit. They maybe he's a consultant. Maybe they brought him on. They'd maybe, be like, you yeah, know maybe. the most about Mars. Tell us everything so we can get people there. Him and Elon are just in, a, in the boardroom making plans. Chilling out. Uh, putting together a team, fun. Elon. You in? <laughs> you son of it's a bitch. It's always interesting in. to me when these these kids come forward with this kind of weird information. Like, oh, you know, you hear ones of like, you always hear the stories of like the reincarnated kid who remembers dying or whatever, and that's like all that stuff. It's still like, you know, we've we talked we've talked about it all the time, but like that, like the veil's thin with kids, man. They're fucked up. They're weird. weird. <laughs> they can reach into some weird places and especially if this maybe this kid had like some autism or something as well like well i think definitely the he way might have been on the spectrum there's a good yeah. chance chances uh, there so it, it's it, it is really interesting to watch this it, the interview is mighty boring though yeah. <laughs> it's it's a little painful Anyways. But interesting, interesting kid. I mean, I'm taking the translator's word, word for it because it could just be some kid in there speaking Russian and talking about something completely else. And the guy's like, yeah, he's talking about it's, fucking Mars. That's man. true. That's exactly that's what he's true. talking about. Um, well, there's we got a lot of mysteries about Mars. So let's uh, let's wrap up. Bariska, if you if you haven't yeah. if you don't know the story, look it up. It's uh, it's interesting, if nothing else. Where, where else are we moving to on Mars? What, what's the next Mars mystery? We have to move to Mars's uh, tiny little space potato, Phobos. Phobos. One of the two orbiting bodies of uh, of Mars. And Phobos, like, okay, everybody knows, like, yeah, they got Phobos and Deimos. It's got the two moons, right? But uh, looking into this, I never knew Phobos. It's fucking weird. It's a weird little uh, rock. It, it's, it's pretty much admitted by all... Um, kind of uh, astronomers uh, who who studied Mars and, and the different planetary bodies that Phobos and, and Deimos, like the moons of Mars, don't make a lot of sense. There's a lot of weird shit about them that has them puzzled. Like they, they don't, they're not a hundred percent sure where they came from. They don't fit the normal models for orbiting bodies. Like the way that uh, like all the other moons in the, like all the other, most of the moons work. Uh, like at first they kind of thought, well, okay, they're not, they don't look like they formed because the way that they, the way that they look is like, it doesn't look like it was formed as what they think our moon was at first. It was like uh, something smashed into the, you know, early forming earth, you know, spun out and then get caught. And like, you know, in the, in the, what's it called? That disc, the disc. Yeah. What's it called? You know, (laughs) Can't remember what it's called. Did you get stone too, yeah, Dan? Dan baked as no. hell. He's got a contact the high disc? all the way from Kelowna. There's like like the oh, fuck. What's it called? The disc that you know when you when you have a forming planet and then the outside like Saturn like its rings like they're part of like a there's like a it's like an accretion disc or something. The I can't disc. remember. Anyways, I'll take your word um, for it. Yeah. A Dan. Disc. Anyways, frisbee, space yeah. frisbee, Fris- fr- disc golf. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, and now we're on board. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> oh, I yeah, gotcha. It's an extremely, it's an extremely weird thing, and it gets even weirder because they did take um, when they have taken photos of Phobos. There is this strange thing that they call the Phobos monolith, oh, and it yeah. is this. It, it looks to be a scientist think it's a boulder. It's a large boulder, but it appears to be about uh, eighty-five meters to two, uh, like which is like two hundred seventy-nine feet across. And it looks like regularly cut. If you look at pictures of it, it looks real weird. Um, it's just something sticking out of Phobos that doesn't look like it. Be- like it obviously doesn't look like it belongs there. No, it doesn't. And, it doesn't look natural. Right. 
Is there anything it's got weird these real on Davos? Sharp cut like facets, or it seems to have anyways. It doesn't match any of the surrounding terrain at all. Yeah, it's like it's not a great picture of it, but you can kind of see if you're watching live stream, you can kind of see this oh, little weird. It looks like a like a tombstone kind of. Yeah, it's <laughs> like a huge tombstone is what it looks like. And it casts like a, a wicked shadow. There's nothing else on the surface of that moon that casts a shadow like that. Yeah. It looks like a tower or something. It looks like Rosetta Stone. Guys, it's because yeah. fucking this this moon, because it doesn't fit other theories about how moons are formed, moons are formed. <laughs> it's a alien spaceship. Could be. Uh, Isaac Asimov sure. actually wrote a story about Phobos being an abandoned alien ship uh, from the past that got just caught in the gravity of Mars. So it's not. It's not you know, out, you know, beyond the imagination that it may be that it was something like that where, where people, you know, there's always like the spaceship moon, like everybody thinks the moon is a spaceship. Um, really? You know, our moon, our, our moon would be a huge motherfucking spaceship. Are, huge. So sorry. Are you saying that Phobos itself is a spaceship or the monolith on Phobos is a spaceship? The whole, Both. the whole thing. <laughs> really? The monolith is the antenna. Antenners, eh? <laughs> Antenner, got them antenners. Sticking out the top. It is weird though. There's nothing. Uh, no, no other object on that moon has like the angles. When was that, of that. monolith discovered? Do we know? Uh, that first... was discovered by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, and they fired that one off a while ago. It, it's and it's been ago? around. We're talking ten years, twenty years, fifteen. I think we. What was the first one? It wasn't. Uh, what was the first orbiter or something? Oh, so we've known about the it first photos of long. Mars, and then the second one was like 2002 or 98, and then 2002, I think. I'm just saying dates. I, I, I don't know for just sure. Just throwing but I think out that's random dates. Yeah. <laughs> just, 1995, just dates. 1998, 2004. No, the very first orbiter was in 71, and that was by Soviet Union. So, and that's who found it first, or no, do we know? Because no, I'm, I'm all I'm thinking is maybe fucking maybe little Boris hopped in his little spaceship, tried to get back, and landed on fucking Phobos <laughs> instead of Mars. <laughs> maybe that's what happened. Let's see. Uh, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter was 2005, launched in 2005. That was not that long ago. Okay. So not that long ago. Huh. So I remember it popping up in the news, and and like. I remember, I remember Buzz Aldrin saying something about it in at least one interview, even though Buzz Aldrin, like, yeah, great dude. Um, you know, he's been to the fucking moon and has he, but sometimes with, no, when he, on, on some interviews, he's crazy. I, he's crazy. I don't and know, he's man. trying to sell books. He's crazy now. Crazier. For but sure. slang and books. I know he's been quoted like talking about that. And he's like, he it's like, they don't know who put it there, who possibly put it there. And he, he kind of says, oh, well, God put it there. But I mean, eh. he goes, I'll, le I'll leave that up to you to decide, basically. Right. So, when they, yeah. When they figure out who put that there. Mm, mm. It could be just about anything. So, so what the what the scientists hypothesize, what they theorize is that it's actually like a chunk of the inner core of Phobos actually showing, which is actually kind of cool in itself because they figured that being able to, if they were able to land on that moon and take a look at that, they could actually tell where Phobos came from. It would give a, a, a huge insight into where the origins of, of Phobos itself, because no one's really a hundred percent sure. Um, there yeah. was at least a couple studies that were done in 2016 that, uh, like teams, uh, international teams of scientists kind of got together to try to figure out the mystery of Phobos. And at least one model was saying that they figured that Phobos and Deimos were created when there was a collision between Mars and another, uh, another primordial body. So like Celestial another proto body. planet. Yeah. You know, if you want to go off and, you know, I know, I know like, Somebody who's either watching the stream or it's going to listen, it's going to be like Nibiru, Planet X. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? But smashed, in there, smashed into Mars or early Fermi Mars about 100 to 800 million years after um, the planet actually formed. And that these, um, that impact created 
these like one large moon, like maybe uh, Mars at some point had a larger moon. And then it actually uh, that moon encouraged the formation of the other two. But then that larger moon ended up colliding back with Mars and then smashing into the surface. And then, you know, and then those two just kind of hung out there. That's like right? quite the theory. Right. But they are, I mean, they've looked at uh, Deimos and Phobos and they do say that they are in decaying orbits. So they like will they're going to, they're gonna eventually going to smash back into Mars. You know, that's like, like, I like that theory kind of because I, I might be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure I can't remember if it's the North or the South, but one of the hemispheres of Mars is like all mountainous and the others, the other half, the other hemisphere is like a giant plateau. That's like two kilometers higher than the other side. And so it, it is hypothesized that a planet did hit it and that like the impact actually pushed the crust up on the up, opposite side of the planet. Cool. So kind of fits with that because it is Mars cool. is weird. Like half of Mars is like a rocky tundra and the other half is like a high Arctic plateau. Yeah, it's really, it's really strange. It's a strange deal. Geologically, I mean, Mars is fucking weird. <laughs> All about that stuff. Um, now we get into more, um, kind of out there stuff. Um, if, if people don't know, uh, Nikola Tesla was one of the first scientists to kind of take an interest in Mars and kind of, he was, he was known uh, a while back, like at, at one point in his life when he was studying like radio waves, um, he was using a thing called the magnifying transmitter uh, at his lab in Colorado Springs in 1899. And he claimed that he detected what he perceived as coherent signals that he determined had originated from the direction of Mars. Right. So, I mean, what he said was he, he heard something. So it was kind of like, I think he said he heard like three tones, actually. I think he just heard kind of three, uh, oh, you know, something, you know, probably that, or just like, you know, like a, they had like a, it's called like a Morse, more signal thing. Dude, after working with audio equipment now with the podcast, I don't trust any audio equipment ever. <laughs> anything. So like when people are like, Oh, I, you got Tesla got three fucking tones. I was like, yeah, it's probably some interference. Cause one of his fucking lines was crisscrossed or something for a second. <laughs> I mean, I remember back then, like, even before Tesla, like one of the earlier um, uh, like theories about Mars, and I remember this back when I was a kid, which kind of got me interested in the whole, you know, pseudo astronomy, whatever you want to call it. But like, you know, that there are Martians was the canals on Mars. Uh, that was a discovery that was made by a guy named Giovanni Schiaparelli. Um in like 1877 and he you know he, it was back when you know they didn't have really great telescopes but when he was looking at mars he said they identified like what looked to be canals like long like very long trenches in mars which i mean now we have better telescopes so we could tell like no those are naturally forming anyways but you know that kind of that kind of set off our, our interest in, in mars that maybe there was something there maybe there was there's more than just you know, red rock. Right. Yeah. T well, tell that to, uh, Randy Kramer, because according to him, um, those are dug out by the insectoids. Okay. Oh, shit. Yes. Randy Kramer. This is the secret space program guy. Yeah. So, uh, Randy Kramer, uh, he claims that he used to get in the middle of the night when he was a four year old boy, he'd be asleep and, Marines, space Marines. I guess they're a part of Space Force. Uh, the space Mars Marines. Defense, Mars Defense Jack Force. Cusinos. They would uh, teleport through his door or his wall and they would wake up, Randy. Time to go. Hey, hey Randy. And they'd, Randy. Randy. Hey, hey Randy. Randy. Your country needs you, and buddy. They'd, and they'd escort him through the teleport and he'd teleport to uh, a moon base. And they'd train him on with toys and tests and puzzles. As a child? All this, as a child, from four till he was in his late teens. So here's my question. Uh, is he alone? Then, or is this like a Mickey Mouse club full of like child space soldiers? Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse club full of other people <laughs> so being it's trained. So it's Mr. Kramer. They're getting fucking mm. baby, baby Rico. You know what I mean? Cast Van Yeah, Dean. baby Rico. They're getting yeah, them all. Baby Rico. Yeah. Now, when he would go, he would go for weeks at a time. But... 
when they would bring him back, they would time travel 15 minutes before they, after they took him. So on earth in his bed, he only missed 15 minutes of time. Now he says he was genetically engineered for this program. So it was like out of his control, out of his parents' control. He doesn't really get into why or how he just says he was genetically engineered for this program. Now in his late teens, he said, you know, just like normal, they came and they picked him up and they took him to the lunar base. I can't, God, it had a really cool name too. I can't remember what it was called. Um, but then from there, they shuttled him to Mars. And for the next 17 years, he lived on Mars and he claims you can breathe on Mars. NASA is full of shit. Uh, you, you can breathe, you can breathe on Mars. You wait and you don't get, and you, NASA. you don't get baked by <laughs> the sun. Kramer. God damn he it. said never <clears throat> his quote is he said nasa lies about that never a straight answer <laughs> and then, so then for the next 17 years uh he was posted on the in a forward operating base called uh forward operating zebra nice right on it's good it was in the north and uh he was in charge of a territory and there, Mars is fully colonized. He was never allowed to go to the colonies. And there's two other indigenous intelligent species on Mars. And that's the insectoids and the reptoids. Oh shit. He was sent to the Aries insect- prime. That was the area. Oh shit. Oh, that's Aries Aries prime. prime. Wow, man. Randy Aries. Bobandi space ranger. So it's, it's great. Cause in the interview, I, I watched with them. They're like, okay, so what, like, what did you do? And he's like, well, I trained, you know, I, I, I ate, I, I pooped, uh, I slept and I fought low G <laughs> like, all right, can you describe some more? He's like, you fought a lot. Uh, and then he goes to talk about that. Like he would, they would basically get in these big gun battles with the insectoids or rep- reptoids and all three aren't friends. So the insectoids and the reptoids aren't friends and the humans aren't friends with either of them. So he's like, it was always kind of a chess match between the three groups. Uh, and they had, uh, futuristic weapons, they uh, projectiles using electromagnets at ridiculous speed. And um, at the end of the 17 years, uh, his final mission uh, before he was put on pilot duty, um, there was they were sent into this ancient cave, and the insectoids ambushed them, and a lot of the the space Mars Marines got killed. Uh, and then for the next two years, they put him on pilot duty, which was really cool for him because he'd always wanted to be a pirate pilot as a kid and a pirate and, then, and a pirate for sure. End of his service, they grew a clone to the same age when they first took him. They transferred his consciousness back into the clone time, traveled him back into his bed. 15 minutes from the first time. they <laughs> This is the great fucking story. So why would you do that? Why, why, make any sense. Listen, I want listen, to know Dan, what what does Bo Bandy have here? Say, thank you for your service, Randy. <laughs> no, like, what does Bo Bandy have here? Like, what what are they buying in? Is this guy like he must be some badass motherfucker? Well, he was given the code name Zen while he was battling on this planet. Also, listen, doesn't sound very this badass. Guy, I don't know why they haven't picked him up for action movies because, like, with his skills and like. His action hero body. He was probably I mean, a consultant. You know what? I'm pretty sure I saw his name of uh, consultants on uh, Starship Troopers. No. <laughs> I no. mean, the Battle of Clendathu, like 100%. That's insectoids. Well, and there's a, there's, I'm going to reiterate great, what Braden said. And thank you, you for re- your service. Everybody needs to rewatch re- Starship Troopers. He, <laughs> Best movie he, he also talks about the insectoids. He's like, they're like, oh, well, so like, was it bad? They send swarms and stuff. He goes, yeah, it was really annoying. He's like, the drones, which the the main insectoids would never fight themselves. They would make beetles, and then right. there'd be swarms of beetles that they'd fight. Yeah, and, and then the brain so, bugs were controlling yeah. them, and then yeah. uh, fucking Doogie Hauser cut shows up, and you know, mind fucks the brain bugs. Like, <laughs> right? So then man. He, he says he went back and he lived a normal life, and he was having these dreams as a teenager. These like vivid. PTSD dreams and he he thought he was crazy. He's like, I'm crazy. This is what's going on. And then it wasn't until then that he realized that he wasn't mind wiped. It was just before they sent him back, they used memory suppression, but it was all flooding back. So with the help of some, uh, what is it where you go and get some memory regression? regression. Yeah. Hypnotic regression. 
he's got it's it all back. So he's good stuff. So he wasn't able to bring anything back with him because he said they scanned. It's a very clean environment. Like even if you put stuff inside you, they'd find it. They wouldn't let you take it. <laughs> they wouldn't Mars rocks up your butt. Didn't stop him claimed, from trying. He crammed so many claimed, space rocks up his butt. Yeah, he's like, they're like, no, not again. Poop it out. <laughs> the well, text, he pooped. He did. He told us. Yeah. yeah, they got a new machine. It just it detects stuff way up your butt. Way <laughs> up your butt. Way, way, even way. if it's way up there, all the way up your colon. <laughs> Power, power seats. <laughs> mega seats. Uh, mega, yeah, they're looking for those Mars mega seats getting <laughs> taken off Mars. But he says then that he had actually still has two um, dog, what is dog tag chips behind either ear two? that uh, he's trying to get surgically uh, removed as proof. But uh, doctors won't do it for him. Wait, wait, wait. So they, they grew yourself, it. Bell. This wait, doctors won't perform some weird surgery on the, his head to get some weird thing out from yeah. behind his but ears. He's been this, regrowing. This he's been regrowing. Yeah. So how does he? Yeah. Have, they he, they regrow him and then put the chips that they're trying to get rid of back into back. his head. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Bo this Bandit. is an awesome <laughs> story. So then it gets better. So then <laughs> he. Uh, when asked if he has any, is there any kind of documentation or anything like that? He claims that there is a process and like the government officials and stuff who run this program are around and he's in the process of getting the disclosure that proves that he was in this program, but it takes between seven and 15, no, sorry, between two to 15 years to get it. And he's on year seven. So he's, <laughs> Hoping it comes sooner than later, but he could wait up to 15 years to get the documentation. <laughs> Randy Kramer they like gave him a time, They gave him like a window. They're like your your request will be processed between two to 15 years. <laughs> oh my, well, my God. thing is, I'm like, hey, what? he's like <laughs> on hold. Like he's on hold on the phone. And he's just got the phone off the hook and yeah. just like, did he's like, <laughs> coming? It's coming waiting. on the phone. Been waiting on hold seven years. You're seven. Let's go. Is he the only <laughs> guy who claims cuts. this? Is he the only guy who no. claims this? He says there's lots of them. And like they've, they've, they've met and have meetings and people have different accounts and we're stationed in different places. Um, and lots of the people, he says all the good people that were in his squad and, you know, served in Mars really like what he's doing. But the not so good people don't like what he's doing. Mm. And that's how he knows he's doing the right thing. Wait. So yeah. I've got so many questions. So if they're just growing well, people, how whole. come they don't just grow people to fight on Mars? Because you need the consciousness, Dan, of a child <laughs> trained in puzzles. Right. Okay. I yeah. don't know what's so hard to grasp about. I want to you know what we talk about starting a podcast network. My first show I want to produce is getting this guy and a few of his buddies to tell stories about the war, <laughs> war, stories. war stories war story. about the fighting the insectoids and reptilians on Mars. <laughs> yeah. um, he also claimed that there's uh, indigenous insectoid species on Earth and a reptoid species on Earth, uh, but they're deep under the ground well, i could get on board with that easier so so i mean this guy probably hangs out with Corey good right i mean they probably hang out together yeah, yeah he claims he his his claims are that there's fully functioning colonies there now yeah they have colonies on mars they have a secret space program with like a space a space navy full of ships called like solar warden and they've been yeah. That's the one that Corey good yeah that's right? that's, that's Corey that good Corey Good's on. that's Corey good that's so maybe solar they fought, warden maybe they fought together serve or together. against each other yeah he, <laughs> he's protecting a different base maybe well, they know how they tip the, the scales reptoids. they tip the scales by recruiting babies mm. well the thing, the thing hey, i'm like i try to when i'm like listening to this guy talk i'm like okay so you're saying that we the government has the power ability to time travel now am i assuming that's only in the past like so once they take you and train you and they can send you back, but that's it. Yeah. What do you mean? Like do you know what I mean? No, you know, it like works like X Men in time. Days of Future Past rules. Like it can only send you back to your old body or whatever the fuck. Oh, okay. <laughs> whatever that stupid shit was. 
Because then I was like, why wouldn't they like? He he should have just left out the time travel part. Time travel fucks yeah. up any good story. Any good story that's got time travel in it automatically ruined. Okay. Now, like I said, that uh, listening to him and he talks with such confidence and just like, just it Most could crazy be people like do. one of us <laughs> telling that. So okay, we we uh, got, we got to do a dedicated case file on this guy and his battle with the insectoids. Yeah, man. I wonder if we could you get him what? on. I wonder if like, we could get him we on. Could probably come on. I bet I man, I. Hey, I'm open to believe anything if he can. Like, if he comes on and he blows our minds, he's like, no, I'll be. That'd I'll be si- I'll sit and listen to that oh, story. I'm, yeah. I'm down with it. So as long as I'm I don't fuck. have to sit next to him, I'm happy. Well, you're not. Problem, no see, one's going to sit right any, next to him. He doesn't give any details. Like when uh, when pressed on things, he's just like, oh, you know, another day, another dollar, just there, grinding so away. You're so like, you were there for 17 years, man. Open. He doesn't oh, remember you. all of it. It's hypnotic regression. It's not 100% accurate. You know, you just get bits and pieces. Anyways, we got. Um, we got other Mars. Let's move on with some more Mars because that was a that was an awesome story. But I'm sure we could riff on that <laughs> for, <laughs> for a long time. A That's while. a whole other thing. <laughs> uh, let's talk about how some people think that Mars may have experienced a nuclear war, which ended the civilizations there. Yeah, at least one person. The big guy who's on it is uh, Dr. John Brandenburg, uh, who's a physicist. And he believes that because they have detected, or he says they detected high concentrations of xenon uh, that are typically associated with nuclear reactors and nuclear fission or the fallout from nuclear explosions, he says that they have detected that in certain parts of Mars. He you know, hypothesizes, theorizes that there was a nuclear war that wiped out the civilization on Mars, you know, when it was still, you know, I mean, we, there's tons of evidence adding up to show that at some point um, Mars was very different than how we see it today. There was water, uh, there could have been possibly vegetation and very likely could have been cities. If you, if you think about it, the, um, the way that, that Mars looks now is it's been a long time since it had water. And if you think about the kind of the way that civilizations, you know, evolve, we've only been around for like, what, like 200,000 years or something like that. I think they've pushed it up now to like closer to 400 to keep finding teeth and shit, but yeah, not that long. Right. But like, you know, even that 400,000 years is like, is like nothing. When blink. you think about di- like dinosaurs were on this planet for like a hundred million years. Dinosaurs aren't real. Oh my god, Dan! They cut them out of rocks, make bones, make you believe there is these mal- mythical beasts roaming the planet. It's not real. I've heard some very convincing arguments about right. this. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's not even that it's just xenon. I think it's like a there's a particular like isotope. Like Xenon 1, 129 or something like that. That goes along with this. So that would, mm. that's what makes them even think more that it was some type of nuclear thing because that's even more rare to have this certain isotope, I guess. So that's why right. these physicists are going down that trail. Now, here's here's what pops into my head when we talk about this one. So if there's, if whatever, however long ago this nuclear holocaust happened on Mars, does that mean that some of that technology survived and that's how we got it? Or is becoming nuclear and nuclear weapons that much of a stepping stone in just the growth of a society? Like that's just a natural step that people are going to get to um, as they go through science. I think I think that is a step, a technological step you have to get through at some point. Like uh, to uh, and you know in the way that technology advances, like you need to eventually learn how to harness the power of you know of atomic bonds. I think that, yeah. of, like, know, of that the, I think you yeah. just have to eventually hit that. Like the building blocks of matter. Event if you're going to be that advanced, you'd have to figure out. I think. Now, yeah. wh- now, why, why does everyone got to start bombing each other when they figure this out? I, that's a whole other thing. But because what else are you going to do with it? <laughs> now, did so say they say there was an intelligent civilization. They had some quarrels. It got the clock got right to midnight. The bombs went off. Now, if there's like organic beings on the pl- on the surface and there's no way to, like we talked about, stop like the solar radiation 
like the space space radiation hitting the planet or was there something was there something there before and the bombing of the planet actually was what stripped away the ozone or whatever like was protecting the planet is, is there theories on that does this brandenburg guy talk about or he, he just talks about they the, detect these levels of xenon therefore it's sh- probably bomb well, he's talking about there's there's these high levels of thorium and potassium in the certain areas of the planet. I think the two areas that he said that the the kind of the the biggest, um, you know, the biggest culprits were the uh, areas of Cydonia Mensa and Galaxius Chaos. Those are dope names. And yeah, they are pretty awesome. And um, he's saying that those might have been like two centers of the civilization. Like that, that's where it would have been. And at least one of them, you know, looks like where it would be. It's like on the edge of what used to be a Martian ocean. It could have been a coastal city, something like that. Um, he's He's got a whole book about it and a couple. He's written a couple of academic papers, but they're mostly just talk about, you know, the evidence that there was some sort of nuclear explosion. Doesn't talk about the details of the civilization yeah, itself. Yeah, doesn't actually speculate on what he thinks could have been there. He just says, I see this. Therefore, it yeah. could have been this. And that's my right. hypothesis. Yeah. Is that is cool mm-hmm. that I've always liked that theory is maybe like if we did evolve on Mars, let's say. Bombed ourselves. Some people got off came to earth and we are not really evolved on earth. We're not like from apes. We're just actually from Mars. Is that the theory? Well, I mean, I've, I've heard that, you know, we've even theorized about that and how we don't naturally, you know, er, fit in with Earth's environment. Like the, um, yeah. We're very destructive. Um, I've, I've read some people saying that like, because we're from Mars, um, we used to deal with a lot less radiation because we're that much further from the sun. And now that's why the solar radiation here hurts us so bad compared to other things on earth. Um, Mm -hmm. do I subscribe to that? Like, is that why I get sunburned is because I'm from Mars and I'm used to a little bit lower (laughs) solar radiation. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure science Probably has a thing or two to say about that. Well, but. no, if, if, we're, if we're going to go with human evolution, then people from Mars probably would have been like looked more African with dark skin. And then we would have, you know, because they think that like the start of civilization was in Africa. That's where we put it. Right. Like, isn't it around yeah. e- Ethiopia or something. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, is like, I mean, now we are literally like re you know, rewriting the books on human evolution about how many different types of species of hominids there were now and like in our family tree. So now it's even harder to kind of be like, well, we had people from Mars. I'm like, yeah, but we had people that were all kinds of different. We had Neanderthals. We had uh, Homo florensis. We had, you know, everybody was fucking each other back then. Martians. And we destroyed them. We wiped we, no, them they came over here and we fucked them too. We fucked Neanderthals. Yeah. We fucked uh, Dennis Ovens. We fucked everybody. So it's like Martians are down here. Come on in. <laughs> Get on we down love Mars. here. Come on down. <laughs> yeah, big old party. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't. It's a cool theory, but. I, like, we'll let you on. Martians in if you know the password. And. <laughs> Clue: The password is orgy. <laughs> so the Martians came to Earth, fucked all the other hominids, and we mm-hmm. we sprouted yeah. out of that. Yeah, they just yeah. showed up yeah. and said, "Hey, we're here for the gangbang." What's up? Here for the gangbang? It's <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, sure that's, how, I'm sure that's how it went. It checks out. Yeah, all the new textbooks. You guys, you get, you'll see a couple of academic papers coming out about that soon. I'm sure. Dan, you're going to write your own, I think, right? We're on the cutting edge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else we got from Mars Mysteries? Dude, we got to get to the, the one that has been probably the most famous for a long time. Classic. The Viking one picture of the surface of Mars in the Sidonia region that looks like a face. Yeah. Oh. Or it did. It did look like a face and doesn't anymore. <laughs> yes. Well, we got better resolution <laughs> cameras now, so I can tell that it's not a face. Oh, at seventy six, we were, we had some beer goggles. Yeah. <laughs> You're looking at it like through a six pack there. 
Uh, well, it's just, in, I think in 76, I mean, we just didn't have the resolution abilities that we do now. So in that grainy footage, you, you know, your imagination takes over. But I mean, those photos, like I see it, I, it looks like a woman's head. Yeah, it's like a giant mesa. And from above, it looks like a face. <laughs> it does. The first picture did look like a face. So if you're back then, you took that, like you've seen that way back then, you're like, holy shit, that's a carved face on the top of this mesa. Put there by whoever lived on this planet. So people are, we're looking down would know that there is intelligent life there. The only issue, though, is like even then, I can't imagine that that, because they would have had a look at that and like you, they measured it at the time and it was, it was like, the structure would have been like two miles wide. That's humongous. Like that's an enormous structure for to be an intelligently made structure. Yeah. But we don't know what their technological capabilities were. And maybe that's why it lasted so long is because it was so fucking it was huge. just so grandiose that yeah. like, and that's the only one they did. They spent all their time during the <laughs> nuclear Holocaust carving out this head. Well, at least two scientists, the Vincent DiPietro and Gregory Molinar, like those two guys also put together a thing uh, where they have right next to it, uh, which has now been dubbed like the DNM pyramids. So they have a bunch of little structures over on the side, which could very well be geological um, features. But they uh, say that they very much resemble pyramids. And this it's in the same region yeah. as the face. Yeah. They're like, you know, right next door, like from the face. And then, and then, supposed to be the and then people say, judging by like, they look like because the size of the triangles is not that big people deduce. So they say it might be a capstone of a pyramid that has been buried on Mars through sandstorms and whatnot. Because what, when, when the stories go back to like when they found the Sphinx, it was buried up to the neck in sand and they had to dig it out because it had been filled in by the desert. So that's where the theory goes on that is these pyramids kind of resemble like the formation of Giza. And the reason they look small compared to the face is because it's just actual capstone is what people claim. Well, going back to the face, I mean, we now have higher resolutions of that mountain and it no longer. Oh, looks like a face. Oh, he froze. Oh, we lost. Oh. I mean, <laughs> we lost you for a second. I thought you were pausing it looks, for. It doesn't look like a face anymore. I thought you were pausing for dramatic effect there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like a was. really Oops. long pause. Okay, well here's Dude. here's the original face from the '76 Viking Orbiter. Yeah, you see it. Oh yeah, totally. Right, we got some sexy ladies below it too. That's cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right there, it looks what are you like even? Martians. Your search history there. Yeah, what's going on with your ads there, Zell? It gives us whatever I've been searching. <laughs> I've been searching. <laughs> <laughs> Russian brides? There's, are there a lot of are there a lot of horny singles in your area, Zell? By any chance? Yeah, Russian wife finder. This one's minus sixty five percent off. <laughs> um, Gotta take it. Let's. Do you have an updated photo now of uh, the new a uh, newer photo of the face? I don't, but I'll get one right now. I think the most recent one's two thousand two, much higher resolution. Um, they purposely went back and scanned over the area because of how popular the Mars face is and pulling up the HD photos, not so much a face anymore. You can see that um, things have filled in. There's not a lot left to the imagination. It, it's a, it's a mountain top, but that doesn't take away from the excitement of like the potential for pyramid tops. And I was like to think like, imagine we go there and dig up three pyramids like here on earth. Oh man, that'd be crazy. So here's wild. Here is a caption of three different versions of the picture. So version 176, in this one, from this angle, you can kind of see the face. It's not as shadowy. And then in 88 again, it looks more like a rock. And then 2001. It looks like a loaf of bread. It looks like, it looks, actually it looks way different from, from 98. <laughs> from 98 to 2001, it doesn't even look like the same thing. I think we come to the conclusion that ancient Martians worshipped Ninja Turtles. <laughs> yeah. Like a shell, you mean? Does it look like a shell? Like the four the four grand deities of Ninja Turtles. Leonardo, Donatello, <laughs> Raphael, <laughs> Michelangelo. So, I don't know, the face on Mars, uh, to me, doesn't, unless, you know what, never straight answer. 
NASA giving us yeah goddamn NASA never a straight answer they gave us the one God. they realized they fucked up this is when this is when they realized that there was actually a civilization there and this is when the whole thing started so it's all been disinformation campaigns since 76 to change people's per, like perception on what's on Mars <laughs> Yeah, except NASA. Yeah, I guess NASA must have really fucked up when they actually they were the first ones to print something. They said, hey, it looks like a face. And then everybody totally jumped on that. Idiots. Well, there was an astronaut. NASA there was an really astronaut screwed themselves came, over. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember his name. And he basically says he's talking about NASA and he I can't remember. I'm sure it's all a quick search. You could figure out who he is. And he was talking about Mars and saying that, like, NASA straight up like lying and like misleading, giving out misleading data. And they've like, they've misplaced so much of the film that they haven't released uh, to the public of these like images of Mars and even the moon. I can't remember the scientist. I can't remember the astronaut's name now, but mm -hmm. I remember uh, earlier this week when I was looking at it, I was like, Oh, that's interesting. You have an ex astronaut being like, I was there. They don't. They don't give you all the photos. They they pick and choose what they show, and well, they I, should just show every. I have. There is people who have come forward and said said they were like a photo editor, and they were told to not necessarily get rid of you like an actual craft, but something that might have been mistaken for a craft. They would black it out just for so no one would even think about it. It might not have been a craft, but in the picture, it could have been like an artifact of the picture, or whatever looked like a UFO in the picture. Or something, and they were told to just, you know, wash it out. So, I, man, I don't doubt that. I don't doubt when, you know, when you're putting out photos to the public, editing is a thing. And yeah, it's true. Should they you do go it? On our website, look at our photos, all edited. <laughs> <laughs> got airbrushed. Got rid of the bags I under think the Andrew's eye. the only one unedited. Yeah, Andrew just said natural it. beauty. <laughs> but no, and no amount of editing it. can fix it. <laughs> So the face, um, uh, the face, not no, so much. It's not so much. I, I've basically been caught, but, but still, I mean, the pyramids, I pyramids, mean, let's just, let's theorize on the pyramids. Let's say, let's just, just to say we did come from Mars and that's why like pyramid, pyramid building on the planet seems so out of place because like, well, no one's ever really built pyramids since this one time. So maybe well, we, do you think, do you, if it's if it's pyramids exactly the same as the ones we have here, that would be nuts. Like the same. And they're layout. they're I think hundred percent they're hide knowledge for you to discover in the pyramids, like the building, the base, the measurements, everything's. It's like all information contained is you can find out from studying the pyramids. But like, here's a stupid question. But like, you can see our pyramids from space, right? I'm sure you could. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm yeah. sure from like Google Maps, you can. So why can't we see anything like that on other planets? Like, if we could see images somewhat close to that, then you know what I mean. I, it would lead me to think, yeah, there's a possibility. I mean, but you, we don't see anything. You can like see that. them from space with like you know a telescope. <laughs> it's not like. Well, yeah, and I know, but not, do, you do we not have the ability like the to look cap, at the other right? planets from space? What they theorize is that the pier the pyramids on Mars are buried in sand now almost to the top yeah you do have like on mars there are now like they have identified like there it has a very volatile uh you know weather system i guess you could call it but it's like they'll have sandstorms on there that last for like days you know you'll have with sandstorms or weeks or something like that but you know they can move a whole bunch of sand all over the place and it's like if there was stuff in some areas yeah it could very well be covered with dust and rocks and things like that especially if it's a civilization that has been extinct now for however many years i mean I, the like estimates of like how long are our civilization like if, if humans were to disappear tomorrow and whatever and and then trying to figure out like how long our stuff would last it's like most of the buildings that we have like even our well, just the way that we build things and like the materials that we use now, like stuff would be gone within a couple hundred years. 
you know, but, you know, but that's not, that's to be like, you know, if you were just in places where you just have to worry about like natural overgrowth and things like that. I mean, you look at the jungles of, you know, the Yucatan Peninsula where just like eating uh, Aztec pyramids and things like that, you can't see any of it. But if you had a place that's like Mars where there's, you know, tons of sand and dust being moved by these gigantic storm systems, then it's like it could cover anything. Now here's, Here's one of the aerial shots of a pyramidic looking mound. Pyram- pyramidal? Buddy, look at that. Yeah, that looks like a fucking pyramid. That's pretty cool. I mean, the lines, the thing for me is the line up the, up the spine of the pyramid is not straight. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it's just not covered in a whole shitload of sand, right? Yeah. And that could be, I mean... It could be, I mean, this is an aerial photo with some light, so it could be a little mix of, I'll give the benefit of the doubt, it could be some, like, shadow and lighting trickery you're seeing as well. Yeah. I mean, it is, uh, there is more, people claim more, but I don't know if these are real pictures or not. I'm not even sure the one you showed me is real, to be honest. <laughs> All these fake. <laughs> sure. Um, like have- I came across this one. Or, uh, this was being passed around Facebook and stuff. I don't know. Zell could probably pull it up. Uh, it got posted on Facebook and stuff where it's like, oh, secret footage that uh, NASA doesn't want you to see. And it's all this like handy cam footage of um, like what they say is like this people on Mars and astronauts on Mars. But it's just really, really bad. Like uh, some of the some of it's like ripped straight from footage from like Mars or orbiters or Mars landers. And then some of it's just like pictures of astronauts. They're like, this is this is the footage of actual astronauts on Mars. And you're like, no, no, it's not. Like That's just a picture, a grainy picture that you just kind of de rest. Yeah, this is it, called. So this is from something called Project Red Sun. They call it, and it was that we actually did go to Mars in '77, and then NASA covered it up. So the video on Facebook, it's pretty long. So I'm gonna I'll skim through here till I can find something that looks like Mars. So they have pictures of the Earth, and then it switches to a picture picture of an overhead of what kind of looks like Mars. So that this is supposedly it looks like it looks like Andrew's head. <laughs> Andrew's head. He's got nice and shaved there. Pardon. So they it's claimed to be from from a uh, shot from the spacecraft from the orbiter as the people are uh, the astronauts are orbiting Mars. But it's really Buddy, poor I'll quality. I'll shoot one of those. I'll shoot one of those shots tomorrow night when I see Andrew. What do you mean sitting behind him at the Knox game? Listen, I'm just, getting roasted here by other guys with receding hairlines. I don't, I don't <laughs> understand it. I'm the only guy that's fucking just given in and shaved it. I don't. I my, shaved it for a while. My head gets yeah. cold when I shave. So and then it, the video, it. the video gets better though. So now, when you get to this video, now you're on. Now they have what looks just like, it looks like someone just took the moon shots, and then just colored the background red. Right? The moon yeah. shots, like those aren't even. <laughs> It's sort of like from the set of some shitty movie. Yeah, but they also train. They also train astronauts. That looks like Matt Damon. Dude, that, that's Tadween right it's there, like man. It's like promo work. It's like promo shots for fucking the Martian. This is horrible. Anyways, that's uh, <laughs> that's Project Red Sun. Supposedly that astronauts were sent there. And that was the start of the whole secret space program. They actually found the colonies on Mars. And that led to this. How come none of the spacesuits are the same? <laughs> I don't know, Dan. Dan. You asked too many goddamn questions. I know, man. NASA hates me. NASA uh, hates him. The thing for me is, I'm like, it just doesn't doesn't make sense that we would have Mars already colonized, and then keep like, what what's the purpose of keeping that a secret? Yeah, I'm I, not not the you know, you know plenty of people will be like, well, they just don't want you to know about it, it's super secret, da da da. But it's like, well, even then, okay. So now I have to say, like, it's just conflicting because it's like, okay, if you're a hardcore conspiracy theorist, you believe that we didn't actually go to the moon, but we talked so much mad shit about going to the moon. So why would NASA then say we've never been to Mars? Like, actually go to Mars and then not talk mad shit about going to Mars. I don't know. Because we found something we can't talk about there. Maybe we did. I 
I think I what I I don't think there's us anything on Mars right now for Other humans. Than Dr. Colon- I I don't believe that, but I do think it be interesting to get to Mars and potential for like megalithic structures under the sand. Hell yeah, I'd be like, wicked. I'm totally oh. open to those ideas that there was a civilization there and maybe maybe they came here at some point. I mean, you have all these carvings of like ancient humans of, you know, carving spaceships and shit like that. Maybe that's just stories of, you know, the refugees from Mars, a dying planet coming here. Just the memory passed down. When you think about it, we have like all the talks of giants and stuff like that. And that could be just like humans from Mars. But humans, here's the thing. If you came from Mars and say you're six feet tall on Mars, you land on Earth and then you can't stand up because the gravity is crushing you. I it guess you'd have, you would have, yeah, you'd have like At least no for the first man. bit, like for the first bit. Like yeah. not so much for giants no, and shit like that. Suck but for, it would suck forever. Like you'd be constantly in joint pain. Like it would, it would really <laughs> suck. Maybe if you're that smart, maybe. Well, but imagine a reversal sending us to Mars. Super yeah. science. Ah, it, just like John Carter. John Carter. Yeah. yeah. No, but Basically. like, you know what I mean? Like documentary, not, John not Carter. Thinking about giants and shit like that but like it kind of makes sense as far as like that that massive like technical technological advances we made right like we're all of a sudden we evolved into who we are now so when you know fr- I mean? went from ape Apes to, to intelligent being exactly like that's you know what i mean like that's kind of a cool theory to think about right well that yeah that leap from like stone smash and ape to intelligent human being is People have run with that theory in so many different ways. Like you got the stoned ape theory and like all these other theories of how we became intelligent. From what, like I read, I read Sapiens and they basically, he kind of theorized that it was just because we evolved, like we, we evolved when we ate meat basically. And how to, when, you know, when we started to have to think of different ways, how to hunt it and how to cook it. Right. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. So there's like so many different ways, but no one, maybe the way is Martian intervention, ancient aliens. This is all ancient aliens here. The Martians are the aliens. Came here, came, descended from heaven, started mating. Some, somehow they could mate with human females. <laughs> somehow. Somehow. Yeah. <laughs> made half, made demigods, took over regions of the planet, continued on their warfare as the Anunnaki. Hey, well, hold, on. hold on. I don't like the mating, but if they're that, if they're that skilled, if they're that skilled, who's to say that they're like, okay, well, there's these semi-intelligent life here let's splice some of our dna into like embryos like so they're giving injections to like pregnant females so their babies will have some of the the genes that they have i'm way more i'm way more for like genetic splicing than i am for like dan's martian orgy (laughs) (laughs) What's wrong Who's, with the Martian you know what, I never thought I'd say. I never thought you'd hear those words come out of my mouth. <laughs> Dan's Martian orgy. It sounds like something I'd be into, but no, I, I just, <laughs> I think more that if they were that technologically. Let it, let it sit for, let it stew for a while and then you'll, 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 you'll come around. I'll sleep on it. Hopefully I, in my dreams, I get picked up and sent to Mars for some <laughs> basic training. Uh, and then I'll get back to you. Too old. Yeah, you're too old, bud. <laughs> too old, man. Can't serve. Mm-hmm. You're over nine. The time travel now is time well, traveling. They back. had to pick one. They'd pick the number one. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a. Uh, what else? I think that's pretty much it for the mysteries. I mean, you could you could go you could go forever about Mars itself. Like you get into all the scientific data and everything that we do know. But that's that's for a podcast a lot smarter than us. <laughs> Yeah, you can have somebody else go check the map. Yeah, no, it's just um, we're, the, we're big. We're big picture guys. <laughs> Mars is cool because really, it's in the habitable like habitable zone of our solar system, and and I think we do find life on Mars, whether it just be microbial or even like some type of like insect resembling stuff that's like that lives in the planet away from like the harmful radiation. I do not doubt that. I don't think so. Even if they find oil on Mars. Oh, dude, if you find oil on Mars, we're colonizing right now. We're there. We I mean, are there. That means their life was abundant at the time, right? <laughs> yeah. 
No, I mean if they because they they have uh, they have I, they have water on Mars, right? Frozen water at least, and then the, what they think sometimes is like they call it like uh, like the sweating on Mars, where shows like actual wet streaks develop on some hillsides, not necessarily on the surface, but maybe below a little bit. And so they think there might be running water underneath the surface. Can't tell yet, but where there's running water, good chance as life as yeah. we know it, right, could develop. Life finds yeah, a way. We, we very literally only scratch the surface of Mars with the, you know, the Mars landers and orbiters and the, the rovers. Like we've only, you know, we put in just the tip. Yeah, because there's be, there's been 39 <laughs> missions to Mars. Okay, 39, not necessarily ro all rovers and orbiters, but like at least got either used Mars as a slingshot for like a space, like for probes and stuff. Only 16 have actually made it to completed their mission. So, like, how much of the actual surface areas have the rovers explored? Like fucking none. And they're not like they're taking samples every like every mile analyzing sending it back right they're not those rovers didn't really do that they were just taking pictures videos and like recording temperature and that kind of stuff weather pretty much so until until we start like digging and have like some super advanced brains <laughs> fucking wig it out <laughs> this is what we have to deal with <laughs> you said too much they're shutting you down yeah said too much but yeah no mars is a it's a really cool place um i'm uh I'm going to sign up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait, do I want to be the first person to go live there? No, but <laughs> what if you hey, let's, Mars let's tourism? Talk, let's, okay, hold on. Let's get into some space news. Let's talk about living on Mars. <laughs> space news. <laughs> I'll play the music. Now you got it. Now you got it. Got to give us space news. Space news. Hey, living on Mars would suck. <laughs> One, you have to live underground, hundred percent, because you're gonna get bombarded by radiation. No, you get that so that means you're like shelters, insulated shelter. Yeah, but okay, the first people on Mars are not gonna be able to. They're gonna have to build underground or live in some like huge steel. Like you're not gonna see the outside. Oh, definitely not. But you're you, not gonna have to be able to have windows. Yeah, but you're gonna land. You're going to land on Mars and you're going to need to get shelter right away. So they're going to have like a pre-assembled building or something that they're going to be able to set up in like four hours to, to at least start there. Or we're going to have robots do it. Or, yeah, and maybe, yeah, robots go 3D print some buildings or something. Mm -hmm. That's one of the ideas that I think one company, one contractor, one company was trying to pitch is that you would send these little kind of like one wheeled uh, like Omnibots there basically and they're just like giant 3d printers on wheels and they all just kind of go around they would be printing out um not necessarily like not necessarily would they print out the the prefabricated uh living units like you know basically like a space station on mars um they would basically assemble um like large over shelters like they would take the regolith which is the name for like the mar the martian uh uh, the Martian rock and then they would assemble just like big domes or you know big shelters because it would be able to block most of the radiation and it would block out a lot of the uh, you know sandstorms things like that so then the astronauts would have a place to kind of just they would they could just go straight inside of those and then they could assemble the shelters inside there so that's one now, way the first generation of Martians are going to be the stuff of legends like Hercules and shit, man. They're oh, going to be yeah. so strong. <laughs> For how Jumps long though? So high. For how long? Well, I don't, I know because I'm not a hundred percent sure. Cause like the, but yeah, the people who first get there is going to be really strange. And then, but yeah, like, like Zell says for how long, because once their muscles start atrophying and stuff like adapting to that, there's no more resistance. Like yeah. it just won't, I mean, if they work out, yeah, for a while, but with the, the people born on Mars, the people born on Mars will be like, well, they you're going to have like people train in Vegeta style in, in pressure chambers. <laughs> Badass. Hyperbolic chamber. 100 G's. Um, the other thing I was thinking of is, uh, what about, think about the first babies. Like what kind of effects is gr like that lack of gravity have on like a developing brain? No idea. 
Yeah, that's something I think we're going to be getting like, into later. We have to yeah, talk about that. Gonna, they'll, be, they'll start with my, start with three. mice and stuff, right? They'll do. Yeah, but I'm thinking even here, like think about like Andrew, your friend of a friend that you know. Does it get busier on a full moon? Oh, every time, without a doubt. So, people say that happens because the lunar pole is pulling more water than normal into your brain and making it go a little crazy. Now imagine there's no gravity, right? We're going to have, that's why all, all these horror movies, man, Ghost of Mars. This, is, this is the best space. To- <laughs> Ghost of Mars. I'm telling you. So it's all cause of the low G babies. It's all cause of the low G babies I know, ice tea, in sorry, Mars. Ice tea. Ice tea. It's ice tea. Hmm. All right. I get, All these psychopaths. But anyways, uh, what else we got for space news? Some devastating news that. for uh, our plan to go to the moon for 2024. A new bill has been introduced that wants more emphasis on Mars than the moon. So it would, it would push back human exploration to the moon from 2024 to 2028 with a 2033 Mars trip. Which is now so, you know what? This this is gonna make me believe in the flat Earth. They keep pushing, going back to the moon. They keep pushing it. Maybe there's a reason. The moon sucks. sucks. Hopefully that guy will give you the secret. <laughs> we need more people to fight the insectoids and reptoids on Mars. It's more important. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, They're always pr- always promising uh, shit. Do you have any other space news? Let's talk about Space Force. Rough. Let's just talk about Space Force real quick. Oh, yeah, the logo. Yeah. So Nailed it. Everyone keeps saying that Space Force stole the Star Trek logo. Because they did. It it's the exact same logo. That's 100%. It, oh, dude, it's very similar, but at the same time, in the defense... That logo, in some fashion, has been been used since like 1942 or something. Yeah, in Star Trek. No, Star Trek came out in '66, so they had three versions of this. It wasn't called uh, United States Space Force; it was called Air Air Force Space Command before. So they kind of had. To, so there's been three iterations of the logo. So some people are defending <laughs> defending the Air Force. I like it. Oh, it's fucking I'm dope. For it. It's fucking dope. But they say, no, Starfleet stole it from, originally from the Air Force. We stole it back. And then they stole it back. <laughs> We're taking it back. That space Space <laughs> like Force. It. It's a badass logo, man. It's I don't care. Dope. I, would, I'm, I would join up. If I'm, in, if I'm in the United States, I'm joining Space Force. Yeah. Space Force. Space How Force. How boring is oh, the Imperium right now, though? Yeah. <laughs> Like that's just an office gig right now yeah. on Earth. Yep. Walking around, around in camel fatigue. It's not it's really a bunch of guys. It's a bunch of guys with telescopes just like going out. Yeah. <laughs> Hanging around the water cooler. <laughs> yeah. Just checking out Google. You know what I Google saw Earth. last night? Like just shooting yeah. star. Yeah. Pretty cool, eh? <laughs> Space Force. Space Force. Uh, anything else? That's all I had for Space News. Talked a lot about a lot of space today. All right, find it, fire up the randomatron. I got to put it down for fan submission. Fan submission. Here we go. <laughs> Fix the printer. Did you fix it though? Because it's but really that, long. That baby's purring. <laughs> All right. This is from. Do you see? I can you use his name. Um. Again, if you're gonna send us a story, write at the outset. Let me know if you want your name read or not. Uh, to be safe, if you don't say it, I'm not gonna read your name. But you know who this is. If I read this, hey guys. I've sent my ex-girlfriend and mother of my kids story to you guys before and was so pumped when you guys read it. She still hasn't forgiven me, but I haven't given up just. (laughs) Ooh, that's rough. Whoops. Uh, I was about to, when a few nights ago, 
my father visited me in my dream. Like I told you guys last time, I never believed in ghosts or spirits or an afterlife, but now that might have changed. Normally, I chalk it up to just being a dream, but I'm a pretty lucid dreamer and not being in control of my dream isn't something I'm used to. It also felt different than any other dream I've had in my life. He died when I was 17 and I came home from work and found him in the yard. He had an aortic. That's pronounced a or tick, Braden. Fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the, 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 the uh, disease. And I found his body when I got home from work. Anyways, in the dream, we were sitting on the porch, smoking a bowl like, like we used to. And he told me that despite making decisions that lost me, my fiance, he was proud of how much I've bettered myself and improved. And that he was proud of me for finally getting my license and getting enrolled in college. He told me my kids are, were everything he hoped for in grandchildren and that I had a beautiful, kind girl and that I had to do everything to make it up to her and to give her space. And in time, she will come back to me. He hugged me and told me he's gotten to know Elisa's aunt, Lisa, who passed away and to tell her that she's proud of the mother she became. He told me he wished he could have been a better husband and father to my mom and to us. And that despite his actions, he loved her and regretted ever hurting her and to use his actions to become the best man I could be. When I woke up, I felt stoned until about an hour into my shift at work, despite not having smoked weed for two days. Ghosts get the best green, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thanks for making such a great podcast. Uh, Re-listening to episodes on my way to work and counseling appointments has been one of those things keeping me strong. Hoping now that my Christmas passed, I can afford to join the Patreon. Love you guys, especially Braden and Andrew. Mr. Conspiracy is the heart and soul of the podcast. <laughs> By far the smartest of all of you. Just kidding. <laughs> He's an idiot. Uh, thanks. I hope, I hope he didn't get separated because we read that story <laughs> <laughs> whoops uh anyway well, whoever his his ex-fiance is uh she's listening take him back sounds like a beauty yeah, sounds like a great guy yeah, do it for the boys yeah do it for the boys come on unless you're do not it. a fan but do it anyways do it. <laughs> do it do it do it do it right when uh Braden's frozen i was just saying early on that maybe he's Oh, I love that hotel internet, man. Yeah, I love that hardwired internet that was promised to you, eh? <laughs> yeah, I've got to love that high-speed business. <laughs> Terrible. Buddy, this Terrible. has been better This this has been better than your broadcasting from home, so it's pretty good. No, he's, he's been good the last few weeks because he got hardwired. Hard, oh, hardwired. I got hardwired now, hardwired. baby. Um, uh, anything else? Who's a... Uh, Theorite of the week. I think Dan had a theorite of the week, didn't you, Dan? Yep. Our theorite of the week is Mr. William Jenkins. Roy Jenkins. Oh, William Jenkins. Jenkins. Oh, William Jenkins. Thank you for keeping us updated on all the goings on from UFO Holic and Alien Nation. I love those articles. Those are great. Regardless of great quali articles. Of quality, very active quality on articles. Facebook. Yeah, Regardless of source, I love, I read them all. They're just fun. I, I like that. The headlines are always really fun. Yeah. Always really fun to read. Uh, we got some new Patreon supporters. If you feel like supporting your boys, get on our Patreon. Uh, we got, I think we got almost 70 hours of bonus content on there now, actually. Listen, this is, this is serious. Now, if, if you really do enjoy the show, uh, please join Patreon because me and Braden just blew the entire month's budget on Canucks tickets <laughs> and Zell and Dan were not also, very happy. <laughs> I blew the budget on getting all those Russian bots to vote me number one in the polls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still glowing from ranked number one theorist. Converted all our, all our Patreon money into rubles. <laughs> uh, new Patreon supporters. Anthony Perch. I'm in hiding because I haven't paid my bill yet. <laughs> I'm gonna take start with a hand or start with the finger. Take a hand. Mm. Coming for you, Anthony Perch. 
Ever a day. Red Cliff CFL. No, sorry. Red Woods CFL. Nathan Rosenberg. Stevie Mack. Ryan Nixon. T. Bills. Tim Fox. Jarrah Stanlake. Lucas. Jenna. Stephen Woodall. And I don't Art by Kasani. Stuart Whiterod. Christopher Ramos. And I think that leads us back to our last recording. So thank you very much for supporting the show. We appreciate it. Anything else? I got no band of the week, so I'm just going to play our music on the way out this time. All right. Well, uh, the as we said, oh, if you want to keep going, we keep talking, but for Patreon only. So if you want to listen to what goes on after hours, head over to our Patreon. Uh, and as we always say at the end of those things, keep those eyes on the skies. Peace. <laughs>